Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, Juanita Holmes. Juanita is the chief of the Bureau Patrol of the NYPD. Let's all welcome Juanita Holmes. And Juanita, first off, it is great to have you on the show and thank you for all you are doing. Now, I want to start with what exactly does the chief of the patrol bureau of the NYPD do? So thank you so much and thank you for having me on the show. And um, what the chief of patrol actually does is I'm responsible basically for all the operations of the New York City Police Department. And what does that look like? Anytime you make a 911 call, anytime you flag down a police officer walking by or in a vehicle, they work for me. Um, so it's a very challenging job. Uh, they are the frontline men and women, usually the first face that you'll see. Um, anytime you need some assistance, you need directions in New York City. And uh, it's, it's truly an honor to be in this position. It's something I work towards my entire career. I began in 1987 when there were hardly any women uh, in New York City Police Department, very small percentage. And I worked my way and, and I rose through diff the different various ranks and culminating with Chief of Patrol. And I think it's the most rewarding position I've ever been met with. Uh, and that's because I'm responsible for public safety. Uh, millions of people come through New York City every day transients, uh, whether it is tourists. And at any given time, we have over 10 million people in New York City and some of the greatest men and women out there uh, keeping them safe. Yes, and I understand you oversee the work of about 22,000 police officers. Is that correct? So that's correct. There are some civilians in there as well, but uh, the majority are uniform members of the service. Now, you started, you mentioned in 1987. And before we talk about what it was like to be a woman back then in the police force, can you talk a little bit about your work or your education before then? I understand you have a degree from Columbia Business School. I also have a degree from Columbia Business School. And I understand you went to St. Joseph's College. You are a well-educated woman. Talk a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, so growing up, I had the intentions of going into the medical field. So if you, if you notice, my bachelor's is in science. Um, and that's how it began. And when I joined the police department, I also would take the promotion exams here. And there's a total of three promotion exams post becoming a police officer. So I, I managed to get through the challenge of taking those exams and studying. Uh, at that time, I was also married. My daughter was five months old when I began in the police department. And it was uh, very challenging, but doable. And then I just, uh, once I was in the rank of captain, uh, the department will pay for schooling or offer you such scholarships, which they're great about. And Columbia Business School was, uh, was my uh, decision. Uh, to go and uh, get my MBA in that particular uh, university. And that's a very impressive education because often when we think of the police force, we don't think of higher education on the level of an MBA. Now, when you first joined the police force, how was it for you as a woman? Well, when I first joined uh, as a woman, it was, uh, you know, it was interesting because it wasn't many of us, you know, so we would join forces, however many, you know, women that there were in your particular academy class. But it was a very low percentage of women in the department, but much better than it was in the 60s and 70s. Uh, but it was it was different. You know, I was met with some challenges where I would have a male officer and we respond to an individual's home that called for our service. And uh, before the door can open, he would step in front of me. You know, they thought they were protecting you. Um, so, but, and then there were times when I would see very little as far as in the upper ranks, such as my rank. There has never been a female in this position that I'm in. But back then we did have, I remember one female inspector and it was, I was in awe to see her walk into the precinct. It felt great seeing her that she accomplished being promoted because after the rank of captain, 
It's simply based on merit, their discretionary promotions. And I remember asking her, what is it like? How does it feel, you know, to be at the table and have a voice? And I never forget her response. She was like, sometimes it's like you never even heard, you know, and that was, you know, very disappointing to me to hear that. And I remember vowing to myself, well, my voice will always be heard if I manage to accomplish the position that she had accomplished. So, you know, my hat goes off and much gratitude to all the women who provided the shoulders for us to stand on and, and move forward. And you've really done an amazing job of moving forward in the NYPD for sure. Now, I want to talk a little bit or ask you a little bit about the problems, the biggest problems confronting our city today and the well, Yeah, so I think the biggest problems confronting the city, naturally, we were met with the protests, just, you know, during the summer, uh, the past summer and, uh, you know, very challenging times, large amount of people uh, for a greater cause. You know, people felt, especially after witnessing George Floyd's death, I should say homicide, that uh, you had a lot of people come out of, especially the marginalized communities, feeling that uh, they weren't uh, pleased the same, for lack of a better word. It was, uh, uh, they weren't respected and they, you know, they wanted to be respected. And then they felt that they were talked to disrespectfully and, and, abuse of authority, anything, you, could, you know, you can possibly think of that an officer can do. That's not what our policy and procedure is reflective of. We were getting those type of complaints from marginalized communities. And what evolved out of Black Lives Matter were a lot of great change. I mean, we were met with reform and, and reinvention that the governor had put in place. But prior to that, the one great thing I can say about New York City Police Department, we're ever, ever evolving. We were always growing and always looking to improve community relations. And that began in 2015 when we inst implemented the neighborhood policing uh, model. And that, that basically is where we kept the same officers in, a partic in the same particular area every day, every particular tour that they worked. That way you, you're able to better foster relationships strengthen those relationships because you're seeing the people that live there and conduct business there every day. And uh, that, that really culminated with us being down in crime tremendously for six years. We were down in crime, down in shootings. Uh, we were below a thousand shootings during that time. And then when we were met with the, the challenges of uh, not only the protests, but then we're hit with this pandemic uh, that we're still you know, trying to you know, uh, uh, navigate our way through. Uh, so very challenging times. Crime went up, shootings went up, a lot of gun violence were met with, but uh, I can definitely say we're trending in the right direction. You know, the beginning of this year, we were up 54% in, in violent crimes, such as shootings, and we're now up 3.4%, but even one shooting is one too many. Um, so very challenging, but we're, we're managing. Yes, and getting back to uh, George Floyd, no question, racial justice is key for everyone in our country. And out of that terrific crime, a positive uh, came. And I'm glad that uh, there is um, a lot of change happening in our country and our city and really in our world. And what about our biggest problem in New York City? So some of our biggest problems that I'm seeing, naturally quality of life. You know, anytime you're able to capture a photo and put it in the news media of someone shooting up heroin on the streets of New York City in during daylight hours, that's a problem. Homelessness, a lot of challenges surrounding homelessness. Um, and then, you know, even our Times Square area, four shootings to date there. I don't know the last time I've seen four shootings in Times Square. Uh, but, you know, naturally when we have those challenges, you know, we're, we're able to strategize. We have strong deployment there now. The tourism, uh, it's probably up to about 300,000 people a day in Times Square area coming through there. And I, I can assure you that there's a lot of uh, deployment there that's keeping people safe. The men and women are there. And uh, it's a struggle because there's other agencies that we have to orchestrate with and work with. A lot of things were taken away from NYPD, such as addressing um, our homeless problem. You know, before defunding or shifting funds in the police department, 
We had a unit over 100 or something officers, and that was their day to day, uh, you know, job to go out and help with DHS, Department of Homeless Services, find shelter or encourage them to take shelter uh, anytime they were met with a homeless person in a particular area. Uh, so it's it, it's challenging, and it, whether it's homeless, whether it's the the drugs, you know, and they, we all know that we were suffering from opioids and mostly in the borough of Staten Island. Uh, we suffered a lot of uh, overdoses. And what did we do with that? We trained members of the service how to how to use and uh, and um, uh, how, um, you know, and implement the uh, Narcan. Yes, and I do hope that the police will be refunded. I was not in favor of defunding the police. I don't think many people really were. Now, very interesting that you mentioned that uh, drug overdoses on Staten Island. Very people would ever think that. What about human trafficking in New York City? Is this a big problem? So human trafficking is always a big problem. It's a problem globally. Um, not as much as we're seeing globally, but enough where we identified a specific unit to address that particular crime. So I, I can recall quite vividly uh, when I was a captain in uh, the confines of Brooklyn. And I remember my officers driving down the street and a woman waving out the window. The doors were locked. She couldn't get out. And uh, when we addressed that particular individual, we had to break in to do so. But she was a victim of sex trafficking and, uh, you know, very disturbing when you see that. So uh, we knew that we were met with these challenges. As a result of such, we had to identify individuals to address those particular issues. And I'm glad you're doing that because I think it's truly a horrific crime, human trafficking, and then the human trafficking of children, which is just, to me, something that is one of the most despicable crimes ever. Now, you're a woman and you're in the police force. I'm a woman, I'm very interested in equal rights for women in this country and beyond. One of my charity boards is the New York Women's Foundation. We are involved in empowering women out of poverty and helping women to grow and flourish so that their families can grow and flourish through careers and otherwise. And when you see the police force, how many women are in the police force today? So currently we have, we're 19% of, of the police force. Uh, and when I say that, I mean uniform members of the service. Currently we're about 35,000 strong. So women, we probably have a little over 4,000. I believe the last time that I checked the number, it might've been somewhere around 4,900. Yes, and now is it more difficult for a woman to be in the police force than say a man? So now I, I, I truly believe that, no, I think we have equal ground. Uh, the difficulty now is just a recruiting component, right? I would say probably about five, six years ago, I think we might've been at 12%. We're currently at 19% and constantly growing. The last police academy class that went in, the majority were women. The largest number of women we've had in a long time that actually went into a class. And then just the recruitment efforts. And, and I'm, I'm a strong recruiter when it comes to women. I'm an advocate when it comes to women. I'm a mentor when it comes to women. Uh, and with all of that, I actually established a group of uh, that we call Girl Talk. And it's citywide in every borough. And we have community affairs officers that have women from the community and they're, they're their mentor or uh, anything they have an interest in. Um, we make sure that we get someone in that particular field and they come in and mentor them. And so it's, it's really great. It's flourishing. It started two months ago and it's just growing. And you see women from all over that want to be a part of it and want to partake in mentoring and just talking to these young women. And the mentoring, is it to enter the police force or just mentoring in general? So I'm a little biased, so it's always to enter the police force, but it's mentoring in general. I have someone that owns a restaurant, someone that has her own hair salon. If you're interested in a medical field or being a medical examiner, doctor, nurses, uh, it, it's the full gamut of, um, you know, whatever it is, interest that they have. And we try and just really accommodate them and have someone come in in that particular field and, and speak with them about how they can accomplish 
I think it's great. It's called Girl Talk. And what is the website for Girl Talk? So it's really part of NYPD. So if you go to NYPD Facebook or our Twitter accounts, you'll constantly see us putting, um, you know, the uh, advertising about the meetings and where they're held and how to join. I think it's great. Absolutely great. And Juanita, we have a lot of young people who watch this show. Many want to join the police force. So what is your advice to them? So my advice to them would be, you know, we have what we call auxiliaries. So they can join any police department, whether it's New York City, Suffolk, Nassau County, auxiliary and become an auxiliary officer. That way they get used to the model of being a police officer. They get used to the jargon, they get familiar with the policy and procedures, and then they can determine whether or not they wanna take that next step and take the exam and join the force. Interesting, and what advice to women who wanna join the police force? That is doable. I know a lot of women that say, oh, no, I can't. I can't carry a gun. I can't be. You can do it. Trust me. It's, it's doable. It's worth it. And we need you. Women are very instrumental to the police department. You know, we, we are multitaskers by nature. Uh, we exhibit empathy. We're de-escalators by nature, right? We don't have that physical ability to take a physical stance against anyone. So we tend to really just de-escalate a situation. Um, I think they're very valuable. They bring a lot of value uh, to the department and just to public safety in general. No question. Now, you have been in your uh, position there at the police force for about one year. Yes. Do you have any future plans that you want to share or I'm curious. So I go where the administration takes me. You know, I often, often spoke about my aspirations of being police commissioner. I know that the, I believe to be the incoming mayor, you know, the election is still, still, still a little ways out, a couple of weeks out. But I believe that, he, you know, he says he's going to promote a woman commissioner. And I, I believe that he will. And if I'm given that opportunity, it'll be an honor to do so. Fascinating and very, very interesting. And I think you'd be an excellent police commissioner. Thank and you, too. For sure. And it would be so nice to have a woman in, in that role. And you're in a role right now that no other woman has held. And how does that feel? Um, it feels normal to me, I think, because I've been in the department 34 years. And I've always had the mental that women can do anything. I was in the police academy, so what do you want to aspire to be? I said, a chief. Okay, so I actually left the department for shy one day of one year. And reason being, because you don't have the opportunity to come back if you're gone a complete year. So what happened was I left because I got an opportunity to be the chief security officer for a company, BMY Mellon. Huge corporate trust company in 35 countries. Assets were over, I believe, uh, 12 million, if I recall correctly, probably more than that. But with that being said, I had the privilege of traveling all over the world, um, redesigning their org chart and security, fortifying data centers. And it was really a true learning experience. Uh, but when Commissioner Shea became commissioner, when he found out that he was going to be the next police commissioner, he called and asked me to join his team. And that's the reason for me being back, but mostly because my passion was always here, and uh, and it will always be in public safety. It's it's what I know. I grew up here. I matured here, and uh, I have a lot of experience here. And I still feel that I have a lot to add to public safety. And I would say you do. And now the other question about advice to young people just starting any career. So my advice with any career, naturally, education. It's, it's huge. Uh, there was a time when you can become a police officer with only a high school diploma, even when I joined the force. But now we had a former police commissioner, Benjamin Ward, who really advocated for education, and he began to require it in order for you to move up through the ranks. So you see now more education, and even to be hired now, you need at least 45 college credits. And, and naturally, as you move up through the department, that increases and culminating with whether it's a associate degree or bachelor's degree, if you wanna be a captain or, or more in the department. Education takes you 
through many doors. It is so important to have an education. And uh, it's something my parents already always told me, something I told my children. And I have numerous nephews and nieces, huge family on a job, at least probably about 20 family members of mine are in the NYPD. And they come on, they're fully educated, they have their degree. And I always recommend that they get their degree, even if they are considering a career here in the police department. No question, education helps with just about any career. And also trade school, because not everybody yes. can go to college and some people prefer to be maybe a plumber or an elect electrician or, or involved in construction. And there are many great jobs to be had. And Juanita, we have a few minutes left. Yes. And with these few minutes left, what would you like to leave our audience with? Well, I, I just want to touch back on what you said about trade, because I'm always talking to young men and women. And I told them, everyone doesn't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a lawyer, right? I know I need an electrician, right? I know people call plumbers. So I'm, I'm equally aligned with you when you say that. It's not for everyone. And a trade is a respectable profession. And, uh, and it, it's, it's something that's needed in, in anywhere. So, um, but with that, I really want to leave off with um, just public safety in general. You know, everyone's concerned about New York coming back and the vitality of our, uh, the economics there. And one thing I can assure you, I'm watching the trend and the trend is going in the right direction with public safety. We're working a lot more now with partners we always have, but now because of the shifting of the funds and the shifting of the responsibilities, there's this, this public safety system that works together. And, and I think we're doing a great job and I just want people to have faith. I want them to feel safe. If they wanna come and tour the city, do so. If they wanna partake in a restaurant or play, they should be comfortable doing so. Yes, and it does seem like the city is really coming back. I always say, New York is back and with increased tourism and and then um, with what you said, the city becoming safer and with COVID numbers declining, yes. I think we're really on our way to a new beginning for New York after this horrific pandemic that we've all been through. Juanita, thank you very much for joining us today. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Juanita Holmes. Juanita is Chief of the Bureau Patrol of the NYPD. I'm Jean Schafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week.